want to welcome everyone out tonight, and we've got some new people here uh, from the Winchester Buzz, is that correct? The Franklin County Buzz. Franklin County Buzz, okay. And, uh, which, uh, y'all are basically a, just a, on a website-based uh, news uh, social, cast, media. social media cast, yes, okay. Well, thank y'all for coming, and, uh, if you need anything, just holler at us after the meeting, and uh, we'll be glad to help you out with anything we can. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion and a second to accept the agenda. I'll make that motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All opposed? Ayes have it. I need a motion to accept the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I have it, and there's nothing new on the mayor's reports. And the Department of Officers, uh, Dalton, can you fill us in on the water uh, department? Okay, the water loss for the last two months since we last met, one month was 24%, the previous month was 21%. We have no known leaks. The state's informed me that before the 1st of October, we need to have our clear well underneath the water plant inspected it'll be up for its five-year inspection so at that time any maintenance work that needs to be done on the water plant itself that includes replacing that ladder it goes down to the clear well needs to be done they said so we need to have that in our do new year a, budget uh, that starts uh, july 1st do we have to get an engineer's report to submit with that no like just, you have to get some base liable and bonded to do the work and everything. Right. There's a lot of different companies that can do it. Okay. Also at the last meeting you asked me to get prices on this water line replacement on Stovall Drive. It involved replacing the approximately 420 foot of old three inch steel lines put in in 1954 with six inch PVC pipe and adding a fire hydrant at the end of the line. I got quotes from two different companies that we have an account with that we buy water supplies from. Of course their quotes was only good for 30 days which was past the time since it was got at the last board meeting. We didn't have the previous board meeting because of the lack of a quorum but each bid added up to about $7,000 worth of parts. And parts and labor? Well not the labor that would have to be bid out separate. So. I didn't know where y'all wanted to go ahead and try to have that done during this physical year. Wait till after July 1st till the new physical year starts. There's some other things like <coughs> cutting the road up on Donaldson Avenue. We'd have to have some pavement replacement there. It's approximately 20 feet of it and one concrete driveway for the end of Stubball Drive where the water line would have to go through and have to be replaced. So, there's a small amount of concrete work there. That's approximately 20 foot at that location. That would entail some more gravel and concrete work there. Would we need to put both of those together? Probably? Yes, it all have to be bid out for the same contractor to do it all. We would probably need to wait till for buying all the supplies till after we bid it out and see if we could afford it and everything. As far as labor and everything. That'll go under the street fund, right? Water fund. Water, Water fund. Yes. Even if it's if it's going under the street and stuff, it's still all over the water fund. Yeah. Yes, since it's part of the water department and the water department's causing it. Well, we can still we can discuss it. And then talk about it next four minutes. Well, you need to get some, get some estimates on the, you know, on the labor cost and the we bring that up. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, uh, Alderman Benson has uh, requested we'll get uh, bids on the, because you said that cost was material, right? Yes, probably. So let's go ahead and get cost on the labor. We'll put an ad in the newspaper to take bids on the labor cost. and. Uh, and we'll bring it up to the next board meeting. All right. Okay. Okay. Other than that, we've got several meters in the system that's 
got over 10 million gallons of water it's gone through and the state recommends all meters has at least that much or more to be replaced to have on water loss figures so I'm going to make a list of all those that need to be replaced and figure out how much it'll cost and we can decide whether we want to replace them during this fiscal year or the next fiscal year then starts July 1st. That's all on the water department? Yes. Okay, and uh, what about the street department? Okay, we've had several complaints about ditches around town. We, west of Whisper Oaks, the people down there wanted me to check that ditch that runs through the county out there. Me and Ty Burr walked half of it out one day, and then I went out and walked it the rest of the way another day. It actually looks fairly open. But Halfway out, it's full of water and everything, but it's just standing there and not flowing. Just a few yards from the property line where the city limit starts, well, there's a large tree that's fell down the top of the tree is actually down in the ditch, so I'm going to try to get a hold of the property owner and see if he'll let the city take their backhoe in there and pull the tree out of the ditch. It would, can't really be cut because it's sticking down in that water, so it needs to be grabbed a hope with the backhoe and pulled out of the ditch to let the water flow through there better. Then on down through there, there's an area that's got a lot of grass and everything in it, that's slowing the water down. But other than that, I couldn't find any obstructions through there. Oh, halfway down and toward the end of it, it's actually no water standing in that part of the ditch before it gets to the creek. So if we can get that opened up, I'm thinking it will drain. Whispered Oaks better, especially during heavy rainstorms. Then down here on Neal Street, one gentleman asked me to see if we could clean out the drain tile that goes on Neal Street and under the old railroad bed. And he thought it was stopped up, but after looking at it, there was one dead tree limb that was on the north end of it. I got down there and got it out, but the whole wood area north of there is standing waist deep in water, so the water just doesn't have anywhere to go. It can go through the pipe, but after it gets through the pipe, it just goes into that wooded area and there's no real ditch out in there. It just fills up and stands there all the time. Is that private property as well? Yes. Actually, an out-of-state landowner owns that. Then over here on the north side of town, I walked out the ditch from the area where we own land over there where we used to have a water well all the way out to toward where the new dollar store was being built. And I picked up a few pieces of driftwood out of that ditch, but it was basically clear other than that. And my crew took the backhoe and cleaned out all around the ditch in that area that the city owns, but the ground was so soft, the backhoe <coughs> sunk down to the axle. They had to get a big tractor to pull it out, so that's how soft the ground is now. I've been contacting the landowner staff there to get them to clean out their ditches, keep them weedy out, and hopefully that will help the drainage out there because a lot of people's having safety problems and things. <clears throat> yards that can't walk in because water's staying out of the yards because the ditches aren't draining. That, that property over there off of Neal Street, you said it was a out-of-state landowner? That's correct, yes. Yeah, we, we can write them a letter and contact them and ask them if they'll let us go in there you want to get a backhoe in there? It's just, it's waist deep in water right now, and nobody oh, can get anything in there. It'd have to be, wait till it gets really dry in the summer if it does ever dry out this summer. So. Now, I'm not sure exactly which way the water's supposed to flow because it goes all the way to John Hunter Highway over there. It's a large area, it's never been developed or used for anything. Yeah, that's a lot of the situation around here <coughs> where it's stopped up a half a mile apart and then the water just kind of builds up and you really can't determine which way it needs to go because of the the obstructions. Yes, but, uh, a whole wood there is full of briars and overgrowth bushes and everything. So it's causing all the landowners on the south side to have water 
building up almost knee deep on their property too. We'll still go ahead and contact him and ask him if, if, if he'll let us go in there when it's dry enough uh -huh. this summer and try to clean that out and see if it'll open up the, the water flow. Uh -huh. At least get it as far as John Hunter Highway. And once we get it across the highway, I mean, I believe it's gonna go toward in that Robinson's Creek over there. Yeah. Uh, I believe it'll go that way, but we gotta get the obstructions out of there to make sure. We've got a lot of potholes around town especially up here on Gore Street this winter where the coal mix we put in last year's worked its way out and there's a lot of solid potholes all the way from Main Street all the way to the school and other areas around town. We we're out of coal mix so I got prices from Hudson Corporation Chattanooga. They're still selling it for $85 a ton. They deliver it but there's a 23 ton minimum. I didn't know where y'all wanted to Go ahead and prove that purchase, or is that I, is that what we got last year, Dalton? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a year and a half ago. It's, it's somewhere about that time. It's in warm weather. So yeah, it's actually the same price it was then. It hadn't gone up or down. And we're completely out, so we really need to get it. I mean, so there's several areas around. I have a motion to be done because I I mean that really did good the last time we did that. It did. I have a motion to get it. I need a second. That's second. All in favor. Uh -huh. All opposed? Ayes have it. Hey, don't. What about we'll call it late? That's that's rough. Uh, yes, I figure if we get some fresh coal mix, we can get that solved. We ran out when we was working on it last time. We didn't have enough. We have to do it about the county. We're going to fix that problem at one time. Black yeah. Uh, actually, I talked to uh, uh, Bobby Clark, the the road commissioner. And he said that they would they would bring their equipment down and help us fix that, uh, but they never did come because the city went in there and we we took the culvert out. Remember, we repaired that culvert, yeah. and he said since the city repaired the culvert, he didn't want to bring his equipment in on top of what the the because the equipment's heavy, you know, them big old asphalt machines. Uh, so I really don't know. I mean, that's a small road. I don't know what the load limit is on that road. Do you know that, man? No, I don't. But, uh, most of it's the county road, but that part's actually in the city. Well, do we, the city do, that, do they need to get us checked by what that would call a concrete across there or something? Right? Yeah. Well, we had uh, the, the city limit and the county line is uh, is right is right close to where that bridge is, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a few feet down the road. From there. Yeah. And, uh, so it is classified as a county road, but yet what's what's inside the city limits we're still apparently responsible for. That's what they always tell us. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, and I think the last bid we had to get that repaired, if I ain't mistaken, was about twenty five thousand dollars. And uh, we took bids on several places around town and all added up to over a hundred thousand dollars to yeah. do all the paving and was actually needed at that time. Well, what we'll do is if we're going to take out a bid, uh, Alderman Benson, so I was talking about getting a bid, we'd probably be better just do one one street at a time for bids. So remember, we did we put Gore Street, and I think we put uh, Cumberland Avenue and Collins Lane. We put several together, didn't we? Lion Avenue. Lion Avenue, yeah. So, so let's just get bids on Collins Lane and see what they'll charge to to do it, but we're still going. You know, we've we've already got the coal mix coming. We'll we'll patch it best we can until we until we can. Uh -huh. We'll uh, we'll put in put up. I uh, had the paper for bids for that as well. Concrete or asphalt? Uh, the asphalt's probably going to be better with them log trucks going back and forth over, would not it? What do you think? The concrete level to bust, right? Well, let's just let's get a bid for concrete then, and we won't put any coal mix up on it until we get our bids back and see what uh, whether or not we can afford to repair it.
we'll try that route first and see how it goes. Also, I've had some people all over town asking for speed bumps down England Drive, Whispering Oaks, they're asking for a couple down there. And over on Dogwood Drive, there's one, another one over there. And on Bruce Street, there's one one there. And over on Hickory Drive, there's one one or two there. So if we use coal mix for them, we'd have to have the coal mix for it. We've got suppliers that can furnish prefabricated speed bumps. <coughs> One company wanted $198 and another one was $145 for six foot long speed bumps. Yeah, both of them, the pavement and everything. We actually bought one of those several years ago and bolted it down the street and somebody went out there last night, that very night and unbolted it and sold it. We never did see it anymore, so I don't know where that would be very feasible if somebody tried that. Again, it's cold mix. Yes. At each speed bump, you have to have a post on each side and a sign that says speed bump, so that's another cost. But one company, the signs is $49.93 a piece, and the post is $22.40 a piece. And there's the cheapest supplier there, always cheaper on. We buy a lot from them. They want $16 a piece for the post. 39.85 page for each sign. So that's something that has to be considered in proving or disproving the speed bumps. Well, I think we've got the speed bump issue that's under new business. They what? Oh, that's right. So it's under citizens' request. Uh, so y'all just want to wait and talk about that then, or you want to go ahead and do it now? Well, he brought it up, uh, but we've actually got some citizens here from Hickory Drive that they actually went from one end of the street to the other and took uh, a petition of signatures and phone numbers of the people, all the neighbors on that street, both sides of the road that were in agreement to, and everybody should have had a copy of this in their in their packet that had all the names and phone numbers of all the neighbors that were in agreement that something's got to be done to slow these speeders down before a child gets killed. And we've actually got a couple of those people here. Robert, you uh... I don't know where Bill is, but... Bill's probably at work. He would not have I'm an actual resident on that street, and I've talked to a lot of the board members and the police department and the sheriff's department to try to get this issue started. And then me and Pat discussed getting a petition, which I walked the street and got it signed. And at the same time, I did contact the city, and Jimmy happened to come out one day and talk to me and Bill about this situation, and he told us that he was gonna up the patrol and you know I like to give him the credit for it because he did do what he said he was gonna do and he had really helped it and I know for a fact he stopped two or three people I don't know how many more other than that but you know if he wants to comment on that part that's up to him but I would really like to see this before like you said somebody gets hurt on the street. Well, all the Y'all got a copy of it. They've asked for a speed bump on uh, on Hickory Drive. So does the board want to make a motion to approve it? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Has there ever been a procedure in place about acquiring one in a neighborhood? And what will it be in the future? Will, will we require these other neighborhoods to get petitions signed like that? Well, this this was really not a, uh, not a requirement. This was just just something to let the board know that it just it wasn't one person that was hollering, "I want this" or "I want that." Uh, this this lets the board know as a as as a board, all of us know that that it's a whole group of people that are asking for the same thing. For, Is that how we're 
speed in the future just on a case by case basis? That that's fine with me, and and actually that's the way it's worked in the past is uh, uh, their strength in numbers, and when this many people living side by side are asking, they're basically asking us for help. Uh, I think we should help. Okay. I'll make a motion to put the speed bump on Hickory Drive. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, and uh, Dalton will come over him and the guys, and they'll take care of putting it in place. And the other streets, uh, we'll let it be known that uh, you know we we'll, we we'll do the best we can, but we, we only got one officer on patrol at a time, and they can only be at one place at a time. But uh, this this lets them know that uh, that we're not going to put up with it because the safety of the citizens is is. It's very important. It's number one. And the mother plant, though, the uh, neighborhood where I'll give a petition to. Yeah, yeah. They can, the other neighborhoods, they can, uh, somebody on the street can take the initiative to walk the, uh, from one end to the other and get all the neighbors' opinion, either yes or no. It doesn't matter. You get the good and the bad, they go together and uh, bring it to the board and submit it to the board just like you did, and then, uh, then we'll discuss it and uh, move forward with it. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> is that all on the street department call? Yes, it is. And sanitation? Okay, a year ago we had a pickup truckload of things like paint, oil based paint, other chemicals people have been putting out all over town for the garbage truck. And at that time we thought we could carry them to Joyce Lane in Winchester and they would take them. We, when we got a pickup truck load, we took it up there at that time and they refused to take it. So they said they only did it once a year. So they contacted me and said this Saturday was the actual day that it'll be done this year. So I'm going to load the truck up and take it back up there this Saturday after eight o'clock to dispose of it because we've got it packed up over there in the shed at the Huntland complex. And we've since then, quit picking up anything like that because we don't have room to store it and everything. But if anybody around town has anything like that they would like to dispose of, it can be done this Saturday if they'll take it up there. Like yes, household <coughs> things. That's once a year that they sponsor that household Is there hazards. A fee? No, it's the free. That's one good thing about it. They do it for free. <coughs> Other than that, that's all good sanitation. Okay. And uh, fire department. Since the last meeting, we responded to three wrecks with injuries. We had one smoke scare after a lightning storm that turned out to be non-existent, and then we had one ambulance assist, and we had two training drills. That's all the calls we've had since the last four meeting. Thank you, Dalton, and uh, police department. I'm not sure what's up first there. Well, uh, any updates to report? And and the chief was going to get to get the chief to board about the the bids on the cars. Yeah, uh, Sergeant Coleman, he's got the uh, bids on the cars. We don't, I don't have anything new to update. Okay. And the bids we have. The Ford is actually the cheapest, right? Yes, sir. The sedan is actually the cheapest. There's the SUV. There's two SUVs on there and one sedan. And the sedan would be the cheapest one. Y'all okay. just requested three bids, correct? Yes. yes. So those are the ones that actually contacted me back and actually sent information over. So those are the only ones that I have. Yeah, we already voted and approved to get the car, and this one here is to vote and approve the price. Correct. Uh, now this does this price, uh, Sergeant? Do you know whether or not this includes the 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 decals and stuff? This is not. This is just the vehicle. Just the vehicle. Okay. Well, that's the lowest cost. Is everybody in agreement with the lowest cost on page three? 
the, the 2016. Two, two, two. There's three bills. Just a second. It's on, on page three of the 2468. Let me see this one right here. Another. It says three at the top. Yeah, okay. The price is uh, the 2016 Ford Interceptor sedan, all wheel drive. The price is twenty four six eighty eight. Do we all agree we see the same thing? Yes, sir. I need a motion and a second to accept the cost. I'll make that motion. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Eyes have it. So we'll go ahead and get that car on order, Sergeant. And uh, and then we'll get it outfitted with the decals and the, the cameras and everything that we got to have on. Yeah. <coughs> Unit number three. We took to uh, Russell Barnett Ford to have the tires replaced. And when they put the car up on the rack, they noticed that the brake rotors were severely worn and debilitated. And the technician actually advised our officers that they were in very poor condition and it would be dangerous to put them back on. And we're not in this business to make it dangerous for our officers or anybody else. So uh, it was. This is over the threshold of what the what I can approve to have repair done. But at the same time, it was the car was up on the rack and it was just an emergency situation that couldn't be helped. And the cost is fifteen fifty seven forty four. Now that was for the tires and the yeah, brakes. Yeah, that was the tires and, and the, the brakes and rotors uh, uh, had to be done too, so that was just an additional uh, cost. And like I say, it couldn't be helped because we, they didn't know that the rotors were in that kind of shape until they got it up there. I'm just glad that he saw it, that they were, that they were uh, needed to be replaced uh, or it could have caused an accident. So uh, I need a motion and a second to accept the uh, emergency repair uh, cost of fifteen. <coughs> I'll make that motion. I have a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. And we have uh, two young officers that are requesting part-time uh, work to, and to be trained. And Mr. Hall is the first one on the agenda. And Mr. Hall, you, you are going through the academy? Yes, sir. Okay. So he is putting himself through the academy. And the only time he would be paid is if it was a part-time, uh, is just the, the hours that he worked as a part-time uh, officer uh, to fill in when we needed him. And so I think it's essential that we, we get a little uh, extra part-time help and that way some of the time these other officers wouldn't have to work so many hours. May I? Sure. I'm sorry about That's all right. Go right ahead. I know this, but uh, in the interviews I had with the gentleman, did I understand he's not going to the academy until the fall? Is that correct? No. One, uh, this one, Mr. Hall is already going to the academy, right? No, sir. It'll be. It'll be. Are you starting in the fall? Yes, sir. Okay. What your how old are you? Nineteen. Uh, yeah, but 19, he wouldn't be allowed to ride or by himself or nothing, would he? Uh, he, can, he, can, he couldn't ride by, his, uh, by himself and couldn't carry a gun. You, can, you can be employed at 18. Yeah, but, yeah, but you, if, if, he, if, if he can't ride by himself, well, it wouldn't benefit us none. I mean, he, uh -huh. you can go ahead and get his training out of the way. And he, after he does so many hours of FTO and then he does his in-service, he'll be able to actually ride. And by itself, just he can't work over that that amount, like 20 hours a week or 20 hours a week or 100 hours a month. 
until he gets his yeah. uh, training through the academy. Yes, and like you get, he gets six months from the day that he gets hired on to yeah. go to the academy. And we've done talk with Director Williams, and he's on board with it. Had he, not been, had he not been riding around with the officers? He just wanted to meet the alderman. To meet us, to meet y'all guys. Yeah. It's been kind of a hectic situation because you catch one on one day. And yeah, he went to meet the alderman. And, uh, but I don't think it. If, if, if he can't ride by himself, I don't believe. That's what they're saying. He no. can. He no, can. No, officer is actually allowed to ride by themselves. Yeah. Either one, either one of the new hires would actually be riding by themselves starting out. Yeah, they're not He's saying that after they get a certain amount of training, I'm going with yeah. Tyler or myself. Or he can't carry, officer, carry no gun, can't. Yeah, he can carry a gun, though, can you? Yeah, he Yeah, once he's been through training, he can yeah. Once he gets qualified, as long as, as long as he's employed as a police officer, he can carry a gun. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do uh, Saturday morning, uh, there was one that drives the Black Dodge truck, rode with Jimmy Saturday. I saw him personally myself. I saw Jimmy pick him up, and I saw him sit down on John Hunter Highway. I have seen this more than one time, and it's not to go around to see the alderman. So I think we've got some issues in our police department that needs to be addressed because citizens are getting tired of some of the things that's been going on. Okay. I know you're talking about, but he's had a lot of hours riding with the police right. officers too. Mr. Hall riding with the police department prior to this meeting. He is not getting paid for anything, so his hours that you're talking about really don't matter or amount to anything. And before we even put him in a car to come meet you guys, they sign a liability waiver. Right. I mean, we checked our policy, checked with the city. There's nothing in our policy that states, oh, you cannot have someone ride along with you. We made sure that was covered before we had anybody in the patrol car, and we made them sign a waiver saying that the city is not liable for any and injury or anything that happens. Citizens have the them. issue, they should come to see me or talk to Pat. I mean, I'm here every day of the week. Yeah, any citizen, I mean, just if you want to ask a question, that's the thing to do is go to the department head and talk to them. And then if that don't work, then bring it to the board meeting and we'll discuss it. Yes, Robert? What's the legal age? Make it legal to carry a firearm? 18. Is it 18? If you're a police officer, you gotta be you can be 18 years old. Yeah. But the violence, 21. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's, it even says it in the post rules that 18 years old. Yeah. I mean, you can go to Iraq and they'll put an M16 in your hand at 18 years old yeah. and turn you loose. So I mean, 18 years old, you can you can carry a firearm. I just just checked. Yeah. It's about as aggravating as buying back cigarettes. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> well. Back to the case in point, the guys need some part-time help, so do y'all want to hire a part-time officer? Well, like they say, Ethan and Tyler would be working just part-time if they needed them, and we don't have anybody knocking on the door, so I make a motion that we hire them part-time. Do we need two at this point, or just one? You need two. Yes, ma'am, you're going to need two. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tinsley here, he's already been accepted to the police academy. I just got the phone from Dr. Williams a few hours ago. So he'll actually be leaving. And you want to pay him to go to the academy that's on his own. Good job. So that's great. He'll get his training. That's great. So to me, it's advantageous to get them on board with us now so we can train them here. And when they do get out of the academy, then we have officers that are trained in our city and, and know the city. So I have a motion on the table to hire them part time. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. And I hate to report that uh, <coughs> Chief Tyler Walls is uh, turning in his resignation and the board needs to vote to accept his uh, resignation as of April the 8th. Is that not right? I believe that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the board needs to accept his resignation effective April the 8th. I 
make it well and say it. I need a second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate everything that you've done. You've been a role model officer, and these <laughs> other guys have uh, uh, learned a lot from you, and I'm sure you'll <clears throat> teach them a few more things before you leave. And so, so uh, thank you for being down here. Thank you. And the last thing on the police department is the board needs to approve to put an ad in the newspaper to hire uh, a new chief. I make that motion that we put the ad in the newspaper. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Y'all want to make it for what day is our next board? April the 25th is the meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can make it April the 24th at 12 p.m. The 22nd would be the Friday. The 22nd be the Friday. Mm -hmm. Let's do the 22nd. Bids have to be turned in by the 22nd at 12 p.m. Sure. Everybody in agreement? Man. We'll see if we can get the uh, Another officer down here. And Alderman reports we don't have anything listed. And under old business, uh, Mr. Connor, uh, I, uh, Ms. Jane, I talked to him, and he's not uh, going to be able to be here tonight for personal reasons. But uh, he said the the condemnation proceedings were effective, and over at the uh, Neal Street at the uh, Baker residence and anybody that needed any information pertaining to that could either call him or call our city attorney Mr. Stewart and they would uh, be happy to fill you in on uh, any questions you may have pertaining to that. And moving on to uh, our city park pavilion. We had uh, uh, Dalton come got me to go and look at it because the storm, uh, we had a pretty rough storm a little while back that tore up the, the roof and ripped the tin up on it. And, uh, and that's the one right at the entrance by where you turn to go into the ballpark. And it had quite a bit of damage to the roof. So uh, once Dalton looked at it, we noticed that, that not only the tin is damaged, but the laths that actually where the tin is, is screwed down to, it pulled up so hard that it's broke thin, several of them. And the post, the, the posts that go into the concrete that support the whole structure, two of them are just about broke off at the concrete. One of them is completely broke off. And yeah, the one that we're, we're gonna have 10 put on. We're just gonna have 10 put on it, but, but once Dalton went and looked at it, there's, there's a whole lot more damage than just the 10. It's uh, the laths that they screw the 10 down to, it's pulled yeah. up so hard that it's, it's broke a bunch of them. And that old wood is, uh, is there anybody here that knows how long ago that thing was built, Mr. Richard? There's a plaque on the. Yeah, uh, later. I the I don't know. The plaque, a placard on the on the wall that said it was built and donated by the Lions Club, but it don't say when. It was built back in the '60s, I think. That was it. Yes. Well, I know I, was, I moved down here in 1980, and it was here when I moved down here. It was in the late 60s. Because I moved down here in 67, 68, and they built it right after we moved out here. Is that right? Well, it's it's paid for itself if it's been there for 60 plus years, you know, so. Uh, that's all the original roof and everything. Yeah, that's all original. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, that's what we put out for the sealed bids on. 
to, to fix the, the, the pavilion and we, we ran the ad in the paper and we only got one, one bid. Did I get it or you got it? take a moment and pass this to the board members and let them look over it and it and it kind of itemizes the repair Biggest cost to be the metal roof. When I had a metal roof put on my house, and it was over six thousand dollars. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to take a stab at it that it's about 800. Yeah. I'm taking a stab at it, yeah. Man, about 800 square foot, ain't it? Give or take. It might be a little bigger than that. It's really large, I think. Like it's more than mine, see now. That contractor called in Dan said if he got the bid, he could start on the ground away and he would dispose of all the old material and the scrap material. So. 16 to 40 would be, it's 700 square foot, I think it's 16 to 40. How long was that dog? I don't remember. It's, I never did measure it. I'd say it's a bit of a foot. One of my rooms is 16 to 40, and we figured it was 700 square foot dead. Well, if it falls on somebody, it's definitely going to cost more than It needs to be fixed. Yeah, I think that's actually uh, that 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 might be a little conservative because uh, yeah. <clears throat> by the time you take into account the price of the, the metal roofing and then the lads and any rafters that are broken that they have to replace, and then those posts, I don't know how in the world they'll have to drill and post out of that concrete the ones that are broken. Uh, and then he's got to pay his labor. So, I mean, that's a conservative price, really. So like the brace posts were eat up the bottle days, too, so he's going to replace them. Yeah. I make a motion that everything will be fixed right. The cost is $8,717, and uh, Alderman Benson made a motion to accept yeah. the cost. I have a question. Oh, I'm what, sorry. Which fund would this come out of? This would be general fund. General fund, yeah. And we did ask, uh, I'll say in a minute, but anyway, we need a second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All opposed? Ayes have it. 
the question did come up that me and she say that, uh, Ms. Gardner, about uh, whether or not if we did apply for a, a, a park and recreation grant, if it would be covered under that. And really, we, I never did hear back from them. But, uh, well, I don't most think grants it. are only issued every two years. So <laughs> but I don't think it would anyway. I don't think the building would. Yeah. <laughs> no, we can't wait another two years. But uh, anyway, that covers that. And <clears throat> nothing under new business. And item 10, we've already discussed. Is there any other citizens that have any questions to ask? Yes, sir. I know Mr. Grass started to grow quite a bit around town. I think they some at least mentioned a couple down my street. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have the grass place go out and look. No, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you got some gold when you turn out. Yeah. I have a comment. Yes. Uh, I was looking over our, our last agenda when we didn't meet. And one of the questions was, uh, you answered Ms. Uh, Coburn's question when uh, you would have Mr. Stewart uh, address on, I mean, a comment on how to address homeowners cleaning their property. You said you were going to talk to Mr. Stewart about it. Do we get an answer to that question? Well, actually, I haven't talked to David about that, so that's, uh, that's not his fault. But it basically, it's going to fall back to our city ordinance and the ones that I was going to talk to him about are the ones that have the junk cars and the boats and things that are sitting there with trees growing up around them and I mean there's even one house that's got trees growing up through it up here that's going to have to be addressed but as far as a, a grass issue I mean that's something that we can just send a letter out to, but, uh, but that that was the issue I was going to talk to. Uh, well, I yes. believe we may have touched on maybe not this exact question, but something similar uh, a couple of months ago. And I believe my recollection is that the city has an ordinance in place that would allow the city essentially to follow procedure. That is right. We did talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not myself, but we did talk about that. I thought so. That's right. Oh. Yes. But the city has an ordinance in place that would allow you to follow procedure and essentially give the opportunity to the landowner, property owner, to remedy the situation. If they don't, to then go in and cut the grass, remedy some of these problems uh, with your own uh, employees, and then you can tack that cost on to the property as a lien, uh, essentially like you would taxes. So there is an ordinance in place that allows you all to do some of that. now. Uh, that's I'm primarily talking about vegetation, undergrowth, things like that. If you have an issue with uh, junk cars, um, you know, I, I don't recall if we talked specifically about that. I kind of feel like we did because I believe I told you an example uh, from Tracy City. I represent Tracy City as well. And they had one property owner that had apparently a substantial number of junk cars there on the property and uh, they had some ordinances that effectively said uh, that he couldn't do that. And of course, one, when you have an ordinance that allows you to do something like that, typically there's a fine attached. So your city court judge can issue a uh, fine uh, ongoing uh, for those violations. Yeah. yeah, and 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 being as you brought that up, uh, Mr. Gardner, I do I have seen that around town that we still have had some people that puts out furniture and car tires. Yeah. Uh, we have actually had some bus car cars up that on the side of the city park next to the dumpster down there. So. You serious? Yeah, all different sizes. And just leave it up there there's a player. They charge two to five dollars charge to take the joints thing and we used to be able to take them out there for 
stack up car tires out by their mailbox. I don't get it. But, uh, so we'll just send them a letter and tell them that they'll have to dispose of them themselves. And, uh, but the ones that are thrown out down at the playground, I mean, we don't have any choice but to dispose of them. I mean, we can't leave them down there. So, uh, but if anybody's caught down there, if, be, uh, if anybody's caught down there, they will be prosecuted. I'll make sure of that. I'm wondering if we don't need to move that dumpster down there because I noticed a lot of strange vehicles from out of town and bring stuff down there, filling the dumpster up. So. For, for the ball? Or? Yeah, it's, it was put down there for the ball teams to put all their guards in. The one about down there? Yes. I wonder if we move it to the other end over there by the, by the back, back of the fence where it wouldn't be accessible to anybody uh, by, by road? Uh, the garbage truck would be able to get to the back of the garbage truck. Is there a way to lock it? Well, I mean, would have thought from a, from a, from a outside around it. Yeah. We had to put a lock on it. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Well, that's something we may have to look into. Um, Open it up there to get the ball down and, and, and lock it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we can do that. We'll just have to see about getting the getting a dumpster with a lid on it where we can lock it, and then uh, the city will have a key to it, and then we'll make sure that the Little League ball teams, the leader of their teams, have a have a key to it, so that they can use it when they're playing ball, and then they'll be responsible for locking it up before they leave. Uh, and if anybody's caught stacking up tires or garbage or anything else around it. Yeah. Uh, Justice will be served if we find out who's doing it. I think those dumpsters are made with things you put a rod across and put a lot on and everything. I think we'll get it. All right. Any other citizens? I yes, sir. Before Winter Dalton sprayed the vacant house beside me, I want to thank him for it. I don't know what he used, but I have not seen any of those bugs this past winter around me. I don't know what it is, but I appreciate it. And we were discussing about our church on Alabama Street. We did vote to eliminate that second garbage off of our water. Yes. Me and you, or what we talked about. Right. Did we vote on eliminating that garbage pickup? We can't vote on it until I put it on the account of some of the other board members. Okay, okay. I didn't know where it went. I just asked. Well, uh, if, if your church approves to just remove, you're going to keep both meters? What I found out Sunday, they, as of now, they're going to keep both water meters. But if we can eliminate the one garbage, since it's the same address, yeah. that they're just going to go with that right now. Okay. All right. Well, I said we, we, we can't vote on it it's not on the agenda. Right. So I'll put it on there for next month's meeting. Okay. And I'll explain to the board members uh, <coughs> what it is. But I can do that now, basically just explain it to you, but we can't vote on it. But what happened is the church up there on Alabama Street, which is the name of the church? Uh, <laughs> the, missionary the Missionary Baptist Church. They, they have a water meter that supplies the church. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Dalton, but there used to be an old house back there behind it between them and Bob McGee's property. It wasn't behind it, it was actually up the road before you get to the Just a little bit of front, up in front of it? <laughs> yes. But in the, the church... meantime, the person that lived in the house passed away, so the church at that time, it was originally the Huntley Baptist Church down here where the funeral home is now. 
and after they caught the film on the Missionary Baptist Church purchased it. But anyway, when the Baptist Church at that time bought the old house, they tore it down. They decided to build a recreation fellowship hall the fellowship. back behind there, so they yeah. fed the water from that new building to that meter that went to the old house. Yeah. Now the Missionary Baptist Church has a water meter and garbage collection fee for the church itself and then a water meter and garbage collection fee for the recreation fellowship hall but actually they hardly ever have out any garbage it might be once every four months or something like that it's very See, small that's the question is, is uh, i've never been asked that question is is the same property is being charged for two water meters and two garbage pickups so uh, because they, they bought that piece of property and took a dozer and pushed the house down and built the fellowship hall. But is it really right to charge them two water bills and two garbage pickups for the same property? And not only that, but they don't ever put garbage out. So I know we have to charge it on one because everybody does, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. But... We told them, I told Robert, I said, to discuss with the dignitaries of the church that they may decide to dig a water line from one building to the other and supply both buildings with one meter. Then we could shut the other one off because if the other meter's got water going through it, the state will make us charge for it. So according to Robert, he said that they would be satisfied if we just knocked the garbage bill off of that one uh, meter. And that way, they just they'll pay the both water bills, but just one garbage pickup. Well, no, good. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, that's basically the because I've never been asked that question, and I didn't even realize I asked if we actually had any other properties that had two water meters over the same address. I've got six water tower. <laughs> but you're only using one. Yeah. Well, the school's got what about nine? Uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thompson Sawmill, they got probably in six or eight. Yeah. So it's a, it was kind of an odd question, and, and I told him that I would uh, discuss it with the board. So we'll put it on next month's agenda, Robert, and we'll, uh, we'll address it. I'd like to say something about our sanitation department, and you can pass this on, Dalton. Yeah. I noticed my neighbor at the daycares, my neighbor's garbage when I went to work was tore open. I'm sure by a dog. And when the garbage truck came by, they cleaned that garbage up out of that man's yard and picked it all up. And I thought that was very nice of them. Yes, actually, today several houses in Alabama Street had their garbage that they had in plastic <coughs> bags that was ripped all pieces and tore and scattered all of the yard. So evidently, the dog problem in the well, you can tell them that, that what they do does not go on well, thank you. Yeah, we've had several people that uh, that have uh, asked us to beef up the, the animal control about the, the dogs running stray. And, uh, but yes, that's very nice. Thank you guys for, for doing that. And, uh, yeah, that was nice of y'all to, to clean that mess up. And I know it's frustrating, especially if... Uh, when you got stray dogs, and and then the, the dogs, the, the police officers, they get, they get it, you know, about they want them to catch the dogs, and I mean they have to call animal control, and then it just the, the ball bounces, you know, and, uh, but. Uh,